hard work, all the pain, all the sweat, all the anguish, the time is now. Ain't no run, ain't no hide. Two teams gonna get them, and one team gonna leave with his head up, the other's gonna leave with his head down. If you get knocked down, that's okay. It's who can last the round. And you got to throw them ball. You can't hold nothing back. Don't get caught up in the hype. It's time to fight. From beginning, you fight to win. In the middle, you fight to win. In the end, you fight to win. We always work to watch win. win. Let's go win. Hello and welcome to another edition of the ASU Football Buzz, a show that gives you the in-depth look of the Alabama State University Hornet football team here in Montgomery, Alabama. I'm your host, Mo Carter, and I'm joined by the head man of the Hornets, Coach Brian Jenkins. And Coach, we're now post Magic City Classic week. Congratulations on winning the Magic City Classic and bringing home this lovely trophy. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was a great victory for our program and for the university and all the, uh, the Hornets out there. So it's one that I think was well deserved, well earned, and uh, right now I think uh, everybody enjoyed it. But you know, it's Monday. It's time to put that behind us, and it's time to move on. Now, just real, real quick before we move on, I've got to just ask you about this. Did you feel maybe the weight lifted off your shoulders, considering the fact that everybody in their mom was asking you about <laughs> winning the Magic City Classic leading up into the game? Well, I'm just glad it's over with. You know, everybody was talking about it, and everybody uh, that was the main subject for months. You know, so uh, I'm sure it'll be the main discussion for, for the rest of the year, but uh, I'm just glad it's over with. We went into it, we did what we had to do. Uh, we, we came out victorious. Now it's time to move on. All right, now from the beginning of the game, you guys got off to a quick start. First drive, two plays, 58 yards, ending up with a Daniel Duhart touchdown. But was that the key that you guys wanted to roll with in the game plan, getting off to that quick start like you did? Well, we want to get off to a quick start in every game. The number one thing we wanted to do was go on the attack as soon as the bell rung. And uh, that was our plan from, from day one. And so uh, we did that. Mark Orlando called a great play. Uh, our guys executed it very well. And so, therefore, the, the thing that came out of it was productive plays and a touchdown. And I always said if we can put uh, productive plays together on a continuous basis, then we give ourselves a chance to win. Now, in a matter of basically nine plays in your first three drives, you're already up 14 to nothing. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like the team was already pulling away in that situation, or did you have to keep them grounded? No, we had to keep them grounded, you know, but the guys were really focused. I got to say my coaching staff did a phenomenal job in prepping this team and getting them ready for battle. And, uh, you know, we just had to keep them focused. And uh, the guys understood what, what we had to do. They knew it was a lot of football left. And uh, even when they came to the bench, they kept telling each other, let's keep going, let's keep going, don't ease up. So it was good to hear that. And that let me know that they were ready to play a complete ball game. And now on another note, Mother Nature played a big part in this game too. Mm -hmm. Was it fun coaching in the rain or did it become maybe a situation where you're like, God, when is this rain gonna stop? Let me tell you, I was so tuned in, it didn't matter. You know, uh, and that's what I tell my guys, you know, don't worry about the elements, just worry about being productive. And I always told them, God will prepare you for everything that's to come. And, and luckily, during the week, we had the similar type of weather that we had to practice in. Mm -hmm. And our guys learned to execute in that weather so the elements were not, uh, you know, a problem. So uh, we just went in and we played. We didn't worry about the elements and we just wanted to be productive in everything we did in order to achieve victory. All right, Coach Brian Jenkins led his team to a 35-20 to victory in the 74th edition of the Magic City Classic. We'll take a look at some of these quick highlights and then when we return, we'll break down the whole game right here on the ASU Football Buzz.
heritage and tradition. Ten teams that honor this heritage. Heritage built by legends and honored by fans. And on December 5th, in Houston, Texas, Judgment Day will be our day for the next legend to rise. Honor the heritage. Hello, Hornets family. I'm head coach Brian Jenkins. Hello, Hornet family. I'm Melvin Hines, vice president of Intercollegiate Athletics. We're coming to you today to ask the Hornet family to get involved and make contributions to the Devon Gales Fund. And you can find a link on BamaStateSports.com for the Devon Gale Fund. As you know, Devon Gales is a young man that participated in football at Southern University. Unfortunately, he had a tragic injury. So come on, Hornet family. The opportunity is here. The opportunity is now. Support the fund. Welcome back to the ASU Football Buzz with the head man, Brian Jenkins. Coach, I've got to first of all ask you about this. How was it to play a true afternoon game? Because we've been playing most of these either late evening or primetime mm -hmm. games throughout the most of the year. It, it didn't bother us. And, you know, you know, like I tell people, the way we prepare mentally, uh, things like that or making adjustments like that are very easy for us. And I think our players are starting to learn that. So mm -hmm. uh, playing that type of game, you know, at, at that time of the day really didn't bother us. Now, of course, you had to change up your practice time as well, going from the late evenings to the mornings. Is that something that you were looking forward to do, having done, or was that right. just a change of the well, time? We didn't have to. We just we just wanted to. I wanted to take a look at some things that I thought could possibly help us academically, and that's okay. why uh, I made the change to going from in the evenings to the morning time. Uh, wanted to give the guys a little bit more time during the day to take care of uh, their academics, uh, try to create some opportunities for us to get some more tutoring and different things like that. Uh, and uh, I tell you what, I, I think uh, is working in our favor and it may be something that I consider doing uh, full time now. But I just want to take a pilot look at, you know, uh, how this would work and, and, and the effects of it and the improvements that it can help us do academically. Now, my partner in the broadcast booth, former ASU standout Eddie Robinson, said that he had a great conversation with you early in the week, right. especially about wearing black and gold this week <laughs> in the jersey combinations. Can you right. elaborate on that? Yeah, definitely. Just to bring a little change to the program and do some things, I tell you. I remember when Eddie Robinson then played, and, uh, you know, they used to wear the black and gold back then. So I wanted to go to a uniform that, that can, uh, you know, represent them. Those guys back then did a phenomenal job in representing this university. I don't think we do a, a, a good enough job in, in letting those guys know how much we appreciate their effort. If it wasn't for them, we would not be here in this locker room that we're in. If it wasn't for them, I would not have a chance to coach uh, a prestigious uh, football team or at a prestigious university such as Alabama State. So I think Eddie Robinson and several other guys during his time and, you know, have really opened the doors for us and opened the doors for, for athletics here at Alabama State. So I wanted to do something that could, that would represent them. And I called him and asked him, you know, how, how did he think, you know, they would take it. He was very honored and I wanted to let him know past the word that we're doing this to honor you guys because of the things that you've done and we're going to do more things in the future to honor those guys of, of the past and all the things that, that they've done for Alabama State University. And black and gold reigned supreme throughout the day on Halloween night as well. It looked <laughs> like you guys took the bite out of the Bulldogs really early on. We talked about that first drive. Mm -hmm. Rolling to the second drive now of course it was set up by a big catch by Brandon Barnes, and eventually it was a quarterback sneak by Daniel Duhar. Right. How did Barnes get so open on that on that play, right. streaking well, down the sidelines? We just thought the play action uh, was there, you know, for him, because we got our run game rolling, and those guys uh, were committing up to try to stop in the run. So Mark Orlando saw something, and he he made the call, and uh, it was it was a great call, and Brandon Barnes made a tremendous play, uh, and uh, because of that, like I say, once again, positive plays, productive plays on a consistent basis put us in a position to score some points, which in the end uh, put us in a position to, to gain victory. Now you guys were up 14 to nothing, but then Alabama A&M does get a long punt return by Octavius Miles. It looks like mm -hmm. basically the kick coverage guy was, was kicked out of the thing where mm -hmm. he was this side and ran to the other side or whatever. Right. What did you see on that uh, long punt return by Miles? Well, we just didn't uh, operate good, you know, on the call. It was a good call by Coach Hendricks, our special teams coordinator. We just didn't operate good, but we made some adjustments, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, and was able to, to operate well enough 
uh, to slow that guy down from any big returns for the rest of the game. Now Alabama A&M would score and make it 14 to seven, and then they got the ball back a little later on, and a roughing the passer penalty caused them to get first down and get their next score. But from from my vantage point, it didn't look like it should have right. been a pass or penalty. Well, well, I'm very tough on the refs. You know, everybody tell you, you know, Coach Jenkins is hard on the refs. So, but and I, and I really, you know, I really never say anything out in public. But that one, I would say, in my mind, was questionable. But the ref called it. He saw what he saw. So, you know, I didn't argue it. I, we just went along with it. And we just got to do a better job of coaching our guys in situations like that on uh, how to uh, follow through and how not to follow through and pull up sometimes. But like I said, in my mind, it was questionable. I think it was in several other people's mind questionable, but the ref made the call, and so that's what you got to go with. Now at that point in time, of course, Alabama A&M starts to pick up a little momentum, but, it, but right after that, ASU, your Hornets, you guys get back to it. Mm -hmm. Once again, Duhart continues to put on a clinic, mm -hmm. finding Brandon Barnes, who looks like Jimmy Graham running down the field, right. stiff-arming people to get it for a long touchdown. Right, absolutely. I think I think the 14 points that Alabama a &M came back and scored was my fault. I was pressing the guys to, to pick up the pace, pick up the pace, let's go, you know, to try to put the game away early. And I think that made the guys kind of play out of themselves and get a little anxious, you know. Uh, so I, I would take full responsibility for that. That's me as a head coach. And uh, I just wanted our guys to know we didn't we couldn't we didn't want to ease up we wanted to keep mashing the gas and try to put this thing away so I might have put them out of character a little bit and because of that Alabama a and took you know uh, just made some plays off of that but we were able to regroup mm -hmm. and we were able to come back and, and, and strike right right back on those guys Brandon Mars did a phenomenal job uh, making a catch and stiff arming some people and getting it in the end zone and once again another tremendous call by uh, our offensive coordinator and let me say this I always say it all year, I got a wonderful staff. I think mm -hmm. I got one of the best staffs in college football. Uh, it just goes to show uh, the type of job that my staff can do, you know, when they're put on a grand stage. And I think offensively and defensively, both sides of the ball uh, did a phenomenal job in, in uh, achieving this victory. Now, the rain starts to come down through mm -hmm. the second quarter, and at the same time, you see it start to take a toll on Alabama A&M, especially in their punting situation. Their punter just mishandles the snap. We mm -hmm. get great field position. We get another touchdown. Next thing we're, we're up, you know, um, 28 to 14. Right, right, definitely. You know, they had a missed snap, but the thing that was good was we were in place uh, to make the play. And I always tell our guys, you know, be in place to make the play. Whenever your, your, your opponent has a mishap, you got to be in place to make the play. Later on in that game, they had a fumbled uh, or mishandle on a punt. And we were not in place to make the play, mm -hmm. you know, so, but just thank God, you know, early in the game, we were in place to make the play and it led to us scoring some points early. Now we're up at a halftime and then in the second half, we alternate touchdowns to eventually get the final score. But then the rain really starts coming down and mm -hmm. I see you made a quarterback change to bring right. in Ellis Richardson. Was this right. more of a situation decision wise for ball control, considering mm -hmm. the fact that I know you like to use multiple quarterbacks as mm -hmm. well? Right. Well, we were going to use multiple quarterbacks anyway. Mm -hmm. that, that was our game plan to use multiple quarterbacks. And so we wanted to input Ellis because Ellis brings us a spark. He's a different dimensional type of quarterback. And, uh, you know, Ellis got in and moved the ball right down the field. We felt like Alabama and m was a little wore down and we can bring Ellis in uh, to create a little bit of spark and get some things going that we can move the ball. And he did exactly that. He managed the game really, really, really well. Uh, he was very careful with the ball. He was able to uh, take some time off the clock. So I was very proud that he was ready to come in. And I tell you what, the guy that was his number one cheerleader was, was Daniel Duhart, cheering him on, you know, right. and the things like that. So I'm very proud of those guys. I'm very proud of Ellis and, and, and coming in and finishing out the game for us. All right, and then when the clock hit uh, triple zeros, mm -hmm. it was Alabama State winning the 74th edition of the Magic City Classic. I saw you get down on one knee, thank the Lord. Right. And then as soon as you got up, Two players behind you getting ready to dodge you with a water bath. So walk us through that situation, yeah, Coach. I tell you what, my daughter was part of it. She she set it up. You know, she's the CEO. And anybody who's met Brianna knows Brianna is heavily involved in our program and heavily involved with the guys and making sure that they're taken care of. But she's heavily involved in setting her dad up, too. You know, but uh, Courtney Bear is, is the main culprit. And I think his mother put him up to it. Let me say that. I think really? His mother did. Oh, yeah. But uh, they didn't complete the task at full. I was a little too quick for him. But I tell you what, the celebration was good. I, I, the thing that excited me the most, man, and all that rain, you know, in that type of weather, and that weather was, was bad. <laughs> Our president, Dr. Boyd, was right down there celebrating with the guys. Yes. I mean, she's down there hooting and hollering with the guys, doing the chants, and 
really excited. My hat goes off to her. You don't find many presidents that have come down in, that, in those conditions, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, just celebrate with their team. And that was so exciting. I thought that was first class of her to, to show those guys that, hey, I'm right here with you every step of the way, rain, sleet, or snow. And, and that made me very proud as a head coach. Our players took note of that. My hat goes off to Dr. Boyd for doing that. And this woman continues to impress me in every way. And uh, it was just phenomenal to be able to celebrate that victory with her as well as some of the other Hornets. And also, you told us last week, when you bring this trophy home, it's going straight into her office. So I'm guessing right. this will be the last time we see it unless she brings it out the office. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Our plan is to make this a mainstay. You know, make this trophy have a mainstay here in our area. You know, and our, our players talked about that after the game. We got it, and we don't plan on giving it back. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely, it's going to go straight in our office, and that's what we expect for it to stay. All right, once again, Coach Brian Jenkins leading his football team to a 35-20 victory in the 74th edition of the Magic City Classic. When we return, we'll get the Swarm and Sting Players of the Week, and we'll also tell you about some other big players, specifically seniors, who had a great game in helping ASU pull off a victory. Stay with us. You're watching the ASU Football Buzz. For nearly 150 years, Alabama State University has embraced a mission that is student-focused, academically rigorous, and increasingly global in its vision and scope, with a growing emphasis on scientific research and innovations. With more than 5,000 students representing all 50 states and hailing from countries around the world, Alabama State University offers more than 50 academic programs housed in its six degree-granting colleges. As the university expands its science and technology footprint, two of our colleges are working on major advancements in STEM-related research and applications. The College of Health Sciences, which boasts in-demand programs such as physical therapy and prosthetics and orthotics, is changing lives with technological advancements that improve the quality of life for injured veterans, stroke victims, and patients who have experienced amputations and other injuries impacting motor control. A recent half-million-dollar Department of Defense grant was used to secure a state-of-the-art interactive system that allows for advanced study of human motion. Students and professors in the College of Science, Mathematics, and Technology are conducting cutting-edge research in areas ranging from nanobiotechnology to tissue engineering thanks to millions of dollars in grant funding from institutions such as the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Energy, and the National Institutes of Health. The college is home to several STEM-related centers of excellence, including the National Science Foundation's Center for Nanobiotechnology Research. The university's flagship college, the College of Education, has been ranked among the nation's leading producers of African-American educators. The College of Liberal Arts and Social Science prepares graduates for careers in fields ranging from communications to law. The College of Business Administration is recognized for producing entrepreneurs and leaders in business and industry. The College of Visual and Performing Arts has launched graduates to Broadway and beyond. From Broadway to boardrooms, from classrooms to crime scenes, ASU graduates are leaving their mark and making a difference in Alabama, in the nation, and around the globe. Alabama State University. Opportunity is here. And we're back with the ASU football buzz with the head man, Coach Brian Jenkins, trying to talk about the Swarm and Sting players of the week. Coach, we'll start off on the defensive side of the ball. Courtney Berry, the defensive game MVP, 13 tackles, a fumble recovery, 101 tackles overall in this year, right. and he's got six games now, which is that double-digit tackle. Right. I mean, that just goes to show the mindset and the work ethic that Courtney puts into this thing, you know. And uh, to be able to play at that level on a continuous basis is, is tremendous, you know. And, and, and talking to him yesterday, asking was he okay, and he, <laughs> Courtney, being Courtney, and me and Courtney have a, a very great relationship. He said, don't worry about me, Coach, are you okay? Mm -hmm. and he kind of chastised me a little bit and really dug into me. You know, well, that's Courtney, but congratulations to him and his success. And I tell you what, you know, if you met his parents, you'll know why this young man is having the success he has. He has a tremendous mother, tremendous father, you know, and, and uh, just a tremendous family support. So I can understand why he's having the success he's having. So congratulations to Courtney. Now on the offensive side of the ball, Daniel Duhart, offensive MVP, his second MVP award in three years, 228 passing yards, 35 rushing yards, Five total TDs. Mm -hmm. Also, it now puts him in the career passing marks, 5,317 passing yards. He's only behind Ricky Jones and Darnell Kennedy. Right. I tell you what, I'm going to tell you. I guarantee you he's not even thinking about that. 
You know, if he is, he'll never talk about it. <laughs> his main thing is making sure he leads this team to victory and he's preparing correctly in order to do so. But I got to say this. Yes, they, they gave him the MVP, and I think he rightfully deserved it. But, you know, right along with him being able to perform the way he did, to me, in my heart, the MVP goes to the offensive line because the quarterback can't perform at that level if the offensive line is not giving him time. And uh, They gave I, him no sacks, too. No sacks. So my MVP for the game goes to the offensive line coach, Prince Pearson, and that offensive line. All right. Now, some other guys that made some impacts were your seniors. Mm -hmm. Of course, people who watched the show last week, we had the seniors on the show. <laughs> right. And when we got to the final segment, when he talked about the Magic City Classic, every single guy talked about the impact they wanted to make mm -hmm. in the Magic City Classic. And sure enough, it happened in a major way. Shawan Parks, first of all, said his ultimate goal was to score a touchdown at the Magic City Classic. It didn't happen, however. His kick returns put right. ASU in some great field position. Right. He, he's done a phenomenal job all year. And I'm going to tell you what, he might be the smallest on the team, but yet he's, he's fearless. And I, and I love this kid, just his approach to the game. Uh, his, he's just a fearless, passionate guy about the game. And whatever he can do to help, he's going to do it. He never complains. Never, I've never heard him complain one bit. The only thing I've seen this guy give is 110%. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm proud to have a chance to coach this young man. I wish I had many more years to share with him. But I tell you what, he's going to leave not only a tremendous mark on the Magic City Classic, he's going to leave a tremendous mark on the Alabama State University program and how to be a true Hornet. All right, also on the offensive side of the ball, DeMario Bell, 72 yards receiving. But, of course, that big catch mm -hmm. at the beginning of the game, that really set the tone early I tell on. you what, I was happy to see DeMario Bell come out and perform. He's been a little hampered here and there. Uh, but to see him come back and play the way he, he's played was really great. And I know these last couple games he's just going to continue to get better and better. And I think he's a young man that may have a chance to play at the next level. We'll see. But uh, I really look forward to seeing him close out his career on a good note. On the, also on the defensive side of the ball, Antonio Humphrey was one of the guys right. pressuring D'Angelo Ballard all day long. Humph had a sack, several QB hurries, and also he's part of a defense that forced five three and outs. Right. I tell you what, that's the workhorse. You know, Antonio the workhorse, Humphrey. And another guy you're not going to hear much for, but you're going to see, you know, how he feels and the way he plays. And a very proudful guy. And, and acts for nothing, just comes and puts in his work in every day. And uh, like I said, that's another young man I'm very glad that I've had a chance to spend some time with. Now, I don't want to put you on the spot, Coach, mm -hmm. but now that the Magic City Classic has happened, right. I've got to ask you about the similarities and the differences between Magic City and being a part of the Florida Classic. Well, um, I think the Magic City Classic is bigger. You know, you got a lot more people, you know, um, uh, which is good. Uh, I think the Florida Classic uh, has put a little bit more into um, some other things away from the field. You know, their mm -hmm. banquet is, is tremendous, you know, and they have ESPN and everything involved. Uh, but I think both classics are first class. Uh, but I got to say the Magic City class is it, it, it's much, much bigger. You know, you see a lot more stars there, you know, than you see at the Florida Classic. Mm -hmm. But both events are first class events that I would say if anyone had a chance to experience, you need to try to experience both. And I'm just honored to have the opportunity to uh, coach in both and win both. Now, another thing, Coach, um, of course, I know your mind was focused on the game, but was mm -hmm. there any particular celebrity that just stood out to you? Like, you were like, wow, that's such and such. And then I walk back, then you, all of a sudden you walk back and like, let me be back a coach for a second. No, it was, it was none that, that stood out. Now, I tell you what, it's a couple I wish I could have saw. Uh, you know, that Lisa Ray now. I saw pictures of her at the Classic Lash Man. I wish I could have saw Lisa Ray. Nia Long is another one, you know. Those are some, some very, very beautiful women that I think represent our culture and, uh, and represent being a woman very well. And, and, and that's, that's why I was so excited to see him. I wanted to, you know, introduce my daughter to him because, like I say, these are two women that I think have reached the highest of high. Mm -hmm. They haven't lost themselves. They know who they are. They know how to represent themselves, and they've done it in a tremendous manner on the screen, away from the screen, you know, and the things that they do. So, uh, you know, I was hoping to run into those two, but I, but I didn't. I was hoping to run into Ricky Smiley. I didn't get a chance, you know, of course, he's frat, you know, and uh, we didn't get a chance to run into each other, but I'm sure attended he was there. ASU. Yeah, attended ASU. I'm sure he was doing some things, uh, you know, that he was obligated to do, but 
those are some. Th those are just a couple people that I was I was hoping to run into. Now I also want to take some time out to congratulate you on career win number fifty. And right. What a win it was. Definitely. But here's the major question, Coach. Do you remember win number one? <laughs> uh, yes, I do. I do. I remember win number one. I, I do. Um, and it was it was a tremendous win. It was against Edward Waters, you know, at Cookman. That was win number one. And, and now I'm at win number 50. But I think winning this 50th game just goes to show that uh, I've been surrounded by some tremendous players and by some exceptional coaches. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to win this 50th game is not all on me. Uh, I know it's the effort of, of, of the players that I've coached and the effort of the exceptional coaches that's, that's been with me. So, uh, you know, my hat goes off to them and I thank them for allowing this to happen for me in, in my career. All right. Now, of course, as we've been talking about, Coach just got his 50th career win over Alabama A&M 74th edition of the Magic City Classic. We'll take a look at some of the biggest activities going on this week here in Montgomery with Alabama State University's athletic program. And then when we return, we'll talk SWAC recaps and take an early look at Jackson State. Stick with us. We'll be right back. And we're back with the final stretch of the ASU Football Buzz. I'm Mo Carter with the head coach, Brian Jenkins. And coach, now it's time to talk SWAC recaps. Of course, your team won the 74th edition of the Magic City Classic, and you had a special thank you to give to the fans. Right, definitely. I want to thank, thank the fans for coming out and supporting us. That was some real ugly weather. But I tell you what, when you look in the stands, the true Hornish were still there, <laughs> rooting us on and cheering us on and enjoying the moment. So I, I just want to thank our fans. And our fans have been tremendous all year. And I really appreciate their effort. I appreciate their support. Uh, you know, I had an incident after the game that was unfortunate. And uh, I tell you what, just the prayers and, and all the messages have been phenomenal. And I just appreciate everything that Hornet Nation has done for us thus far. Now going around the SWAC from this past week, the rematch of the SWAC championship game down in Baton Rouge had Alcorn beating Southern 48 to, 48 to 7 and behind a back of quarterback for Alcorn because Gibbs got hurt. Right. Uh, that one shocked me a little bit because I, I, I really thought that Southern is, it was a very good football team, very physical team. I thought they were the most physical team that we've played this year. So uh, that, that one kind of shocked me a little bit on, on that score. All right. Um, Prairie View beats Arkansas Pine Bluff 54-29. to 29. We'll see Prairie View at the new ASU Stadium mm -hmm. in the next home game. Right, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, when we get to them, we get to them. But right now, our main focus is Jackson State. All right. Speaking of Jackson State, they, were, they came back to beat Mississippi Valley, scoring 17 points in the full quarter to win 26 to 16 in what some people were calling Common G Bowl, too, because you remember Rick was at in Jackson State right. and now he's at Valley. Well, that just goes to show you, uh, you know, what Common G is doing in Mississippi Valley. And I, and I stated to everyone, I thought they were really improved and you could not go in there uh, and play that team and think that you were just going to walk over them. I think Common G is a, is a good coach. He's a veteran coach. And I mean, you better watch out. I can see that, that Mississippi Valley team really get rolling here in another year or so. And an unfortunate situation for Texas Southern, their game against College of the Faith down in Houston was canceled due to the severe flooding in the greater Houston area. Right, that's, that's very unfortunate, but my prayers go out to Texas Southern and, and Coach Asbury, you know, uh, I just hope everybody's okay, you know, and, and no lives were lost or uh, anything was uh, severely damaged to the point where 
uh, they were able to survive. So uh, I just I just send prayers out to, to that to that university and that program. Now here's the week at here's the list of games this week: Mississippi Valley at Alabama A and M, Prairie View at Alcorn, Texas Southern at Grambling, Southern at Arkansas Pine Bluff, and of course. Our ASU Hornets are heading to Jackson State this upcoming weekend for a 6 o'clock kick. Coach, what are your first thoughts about facing this Tigers team that's been through some transition the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks? Well, I mean, they're a dangerous football team. We've watched them on film several times this year because we've played people that, that they've already played. And uh, we, we're going to prepare for them the same as we prepare for everybody else. And uh, we're going to make sure we got all of our bases covered and we put together a good game plan to go in and play in a hostile territory. They've been through a lot of adversity, but nevertheless, they've still found a way to, to win some ball games, and that speaks volumes about uh, the leadership that's going on over there. So we're just going to put a, a good plan together and, and make sure that, that we're prepared to go in and play a complete uh, physical ball game. Their top, I mean, their leading passer is Lamontez Ivy, who is one of the top passers in the entire swag. So I'm sure your defense will be kept on his toes because all they do is really run an air raid offense because of their right. offense coordinator, Tim Jane. Right, and they do a very good job of moving the ball around and getting it to many different people. So uh, he's not a top passer in, in this conference for, for no reason, and we understand that. And our hands are full, and we've got to be totally prepared like I say, to play a complete sound ball game if we want to come out victorious. Now, one thing that th their defense isn't as great as far as stat-wise, so this could be a great opportunity for our offense to shine uh, Saturday night in Jackson. Well, you know, I never look at stats when it comes to a game. You know, the number one thing I put my time into is us, making sure that we're prepared and making sure that the offensive plan or defensive plan or special team plan that we have in place is one that's sound and is one that can lead us to victory. And just on a final note, Coach, with the win, we pulled to the 500 mark, so getting another win this week will get us finally to a winning record for the first time this season. Well, you know, we'll see. I mean, number one thing is, is just concentrating and put our focus on preparation. And uh, if we prepare correctly, then we put ourselves in a position to achieve. And, uh, and that's, what, that's what we believe. And so we're just going to go into this game the same way we're going to every game, preparing. And, uh, you know, in order to put ourselves in a position to win some ball games. Thank you so much, Coach Brian Jenkins. We appreciate you joining us for another edition of the ASU Football Buzz. Up next for ASU, Jackson State this Saturday at 6 p.m. If you're not traveling out to Jackson, don't worry. You can check us out with the Alabama State University Hornets Sports Network online and on your radio dial this Saturday at 6. Pre-game show starts at 5.30. For Coach Brian Jenkins, I'm Mo Carter. Have yourself a wonderful evening and take care.